We present an addendum to some facts we wrote previously about the life of our society with the intention of sending it to Adnan Menderes. Addendum In my view, the sole way of preventing the Tijani question being loaded on the religious democrats, which resulted from the unnecessary, arbitrary laws of the former regime, indeed due to their provocations, and so that they do not lose face in the sight of the Islamic world, is to restore Hagia Sophia to its sacred function of 500 years, just as they were strengthened tenfold by restoring the Arabic call to prayer and to announce the Risale Nur's freedom officially. For at present the Risale Nur is yielding very favorable results in the Islamic world and has won its good opinion for the people of this country and five courts have acquitted it and 28 years of court cases have found nothing harmful in it. The religious democrats should apply a self to this bond. Then they will both win the good opinion of the world of Islam and the injustices and errors of others will not be ascribed to them. For the sake of the religious democrats, and especially such persons as Adnan Menderes, I have dwelt on political matters for an hour or two, despite having renounced them for the past 35 years, and have written this. Said Nursi In his name be he glorified. A summons arrived from Samson Criminal Court, which stated that the examining magistrate and prosecutor had opened a case against me in connection with a complaint I had written which was published in the newspaper, Büyük Jihad. They read it to me, and I saw that it contained only four points that were worthy of consideration. The first, the editor of Büyük Jihad had evidently told the public prosecutor Said Nursi sent me the article, so I published it. The fact of the matter is this. When I was ill in Emirda, my brothers there came to visit me, and we spoke about an unpleasant and inhuman incident that had occurred involving me. I was both ill and angry and said a few things complaining about Ankara. The person who assisted me was with me and he wrote them down. With the approval of the new students, he sent the note to one or two students in Ankara for them to show to some religious deputies so that, seeing that I was ill, difficulties should not be inflicted on me. It was sent and some deputies saw it. It pleased a person we are not acquainted with and he evidently sent it to the editor of Big Jihad. But I swear that neither then did I know who sent it nor do I know. A copy was sent here after it was published, and someone read it to me since I do not know the new letters. I was pleased and called down God's blessings on the publishers. It's true that I have given up politics for 35 years, but for the sake of religion I was grateful to the owner and writers of Big Jihad, a newspaper which serves religious sincerely. May God be pleased with them. I exclaimed. After that, the blessed paper was then sent to me regularly, but without my knowledge and without it being paid for. The second point is about my being sent to the criminal court in Samsun. Concerning this point, I say with all certainty that I would have liked to go to Samsun to visit my brothers of the hereafter who are linked to the big jihad and the new students in the region but as stated by the doctor's report, my infirmity is so advanced that for one and a half years I have been unable to attend for five minutes even the court that was holding the trial, although it had summoned me. The public prosecutor and examining magistrate who was acting as judge were compelled to come to me. They brought with them the newspaper that was the subject of their questioning. The paper had mixed in some of its own words with mine. I gave them the necessary replies. If the criminal court attaches so much importance to this case, it should allow my trial to be transferred to Eskishir, for there I can appear in person since I have a two month report from the health committee stating that I am severely ill from poison. It is otherwise quite impossible. Third point. 
Basing it on Article 163 of the Criminal Code, the prosecutor and examining magistrate accused Said Nursi of exploiting religion for politics and disturbing public order. The truth about this point is that five or six courts over the past 29 years and the police of five or six provinces have found nothing indictable apart from two matters in the 133 parts of my books and all my thousands of letters which they had seized despite the provocations of some irreligious secret societies and their deceiving certain naive officials. Evidence for this are the facts that there is the criminal court and Ankara criminal courts and the court of appeal all agreed on my acquittal and the return of all my books and in five or six provinces only one court wanted to impose a light sentence on the pretext of my expounding a Quranic verse about Islamic duress. In the face of my decisive and powerful reply, they were obliged to alter the verdict into one of discretion. That is to say, they could find nothing to come with me of either. For further elucidation of this point, I am sending you also the petition I sent to the chairman of Afyon court. In short, the same palaver was repeated in five or six courts, yet they could find nothing that constitutes an offense. Now, the Samson prosecutor and examining magistrate are repeating the same palaver of 28 years. He is conducting campaigns of propaganda to secure personal influence and is exploiting religion for political ends. I refer them to my unrefuted defense speeches of 400 or so pages, which I have delivered during five trials. Let them take a look at them rather than making me speak. Said Nursi. In his name be he glorified. Having received a summons from Samson, I am presenting my brief reply to its panel of judges. First, I did not send the article. All my friends here know that. Second, by reason of my severe illness due to being poisoned, which was an assassination attempt by my coward's enemies, I have been able to attend only once the mosque next to my hero. I therefore tendered the legal request to have the trial transferred from Samson Court to Eskishir, which is near here. An event of the greatest importance, a petition and a complaint. We have been given a magazine called a Siddiq, which is published in Pakistan. We saw that nearly half of the 50-page magazine consisted of articles from the Risale Nur. On the front page and given pride of place was the first topic of the 22nd letter written as an invitation to the verse, indeed, the believers are brothers, and to Islam. The Turkish original of the treatise, which the Arabic magazine translated, was presented a year ago to the public and especially to the leaders of this Islamic government and its deputies. There are three or four reasons for again presenting it for their information. The first, it is now established through the hundreds of certain signs and evidences in the ratifying stamp of the unseen collection from the risale Nur, which have been affirmed by numerous events, that by performing fully the function of a Quranic barrier against the moral and spiritual devastation of anarchy, communism, naturalism, and materialism, and doubts, suspicions, and absolute disbelief, the risale Nur is a means of preserving this country within the perilous storms that shake the world like acceptable ants giving. It has become abundantly clear that it forms an immaterial shield against the calamity of the Second World War, preventing the disasters that are occurring in other countries from entering this country. The most outright scientific philosophers, even, who have studied the risale Nur have had to affirm this fact. With its 500,000 students and the 600,000 copies of its treatises, and with its instruction in belief its placing a prohibitor in everyone's hearts and ensuring the maintenance of public order, and with its striving to apply the Qur'an's fundamental law, no bearer of burdens can bear the burden of another, 
that is, no one is answerable for another's sins, and with none of its millions of readers having received any harm, it has been proud to be a miracle of the Quran at this time and a means of repulsing calamities from this country and nation. Despite this, although for the past 25 years secret, subversive societies that act on account of anarchy have attempted through their intrigues to incite the courts against us, and five major courts in five provinces have been unable to find a single indictable point, having studied all the parts of the Salinur in the greatest detail and have acquitted it, and although 20 judiciaries in 20 places have also been involved with it, they decided that it contained nothing which constitutes an offense, and Afyon court twice ruled that the treatises should be returned to their owners. For five years, due to the deceptions, stratagems, and excuses of secret societies, that same court has postponed returning them, despite their return and free publication are required legally. For, as has been noted by some of the major police headquarters and members of the police force, no harm has been observed in the hundreds of thousands of copies of the Risale Nur, and no disturbance or incident involving the Nur students has been recorded, which proves that like acceptable ants giving, the Risale Nur serves as a foundation of public order and security and proceeding from the essential truth of the Qur'an is a means of preserving this country from material, moral, and spiritual dangers. A guide for youth is a most beneficial part of the Risale Nur that has trained and instructed thousands of youths to the advantage of this country, nation, and public order. In connection with its trial, during which 120 police tried to disperse the crowd, and despite his illness, our master twice attended the court, which unanimously ruled that both himself and a guide for youth be acquitted. But then, although all the treatises among which was the guides had been acquitted by five courts, and it should have been returned in 15 days, 15 months later it still has not been returned. It may therefore be said that the present events which have caused the country losses of one and a half thousand million liras, have come about due to the above and due to Afyon court delaying for five years the return of the treatises in spite of the decisions of the criminal courts of Denizli and Ankara and due to the seizure of the personal copies paid for by himself of a person who in respect of belief, religion and public order is more beneficial than a hundred preachers for the region of Diyarbakir and the eastern provinces, thus preventing his useful services to the country and nation. Such services resemble acceptable alms giving and are a means of repulsing disasters, and their being obscured in this way has resulted in the calamity finding a way and occurring. If, following the decisions of the five courts, and Istanbul for the acquittals, a guide for youth had been published, the Muslim youths would have taken lessons from it and would certainly not allow the corruption of the revolutionaries or others and would have displayed every effort to save the nation from these huge losses. They would not have permitted the blood of this loss. Yes, indeed, our master understood while a prisoner of war in Russia during the Great War that the dangers threatening the youth with moral and spiritual corruption would be visited on our country. He was alarmed, and since that time has written numerous works like a guide for youth to shield them from it. He has published numerous lessons from the all-wise Quran, which, all thanks be to God, have been instrumental in saving very many young people. Since the politicians are now seeking general reconciliation, and national unity, they should permit the publication of the treaties printed in the magazine as Siddiq, to which Pakistan has attached so much importance. In his name be he glorified. According to an inner meaning of the verse, no bearer of burdens can bear the burden of another, no one is answerable for another's error, even the perpetrator's brother.
So, is there any law in the world that could lay charges against 130 books with their 100,000 pages on account of one page of a 100 page treatise? Even if in the view of the obdurately unfair it contained an error? In any event, five courts of law have acquitted the same books over the past 30 years. Also, 20 courts were involved with them due to the Malatya incident. Those 20 courts said they could find nothing reprehensible in them. Also, no one has been in any way harmed by the 600,000 copies that have been disseminated both in this country and abroad, and even Christians have read them in the place they call the Nurse Study Center inside one of Europe's leading schools, and they have been regarded highly in the Islamic world and have spread there and a treatise from the Risale Nur printed in the Pakistani magazine as Siddiq was even sent to the Directorate of Religious Affairs and although it has been published so widely, no religious scholar has objected to it. All this shows that to protect the Risale Nur is a genuine duty of the Religious Affairs Directorate. For like the office of the Shaykhul Islam, the Directorate is the religious instructor not only of Turkey, but of all the Islamic world, with which it has relations and connections. It is essential at the present time, especially, that the world of Islam looks completely favorably on it and does not entertain doubts about it. Furthermore, the Risalinur has been met favorably everywhere in the Islamic world and even in Europe and effectively disallows the Islamic governments which are not elite with Turkey looking negatively on the directorate and thus defends the Directorate's honor. It is therefore imperative that the Directorate publishes the Risale Nur as one of its own works. The Experts Committee should give due consideration to this point. For these reasons, the members and hojas of the Directorate should be concerning themselves with the Risale Nur a hundred times more than Rechid Said Nursi and Nur students so that it may be protected and preserved in the face of the assaults of the irreligious. The intriguers should be silenced who are preventing its publication despite its numerous acquittals. Said Nursi In his name be he glorified. Peace be upon you and God's mercy and blessings. In Ankara, on the pretext of the staff of Moses, and a guide for youth, they came to take all the Risale Nur of one of our brothers. He showed them the criminal court's acquittal of the staff of Moses, so they did not take it. Without being aware of it, they put some books on top of the ten copies of a guide for youth, which they had found and placed before their eyes. When they were set to go, they searched everywhere for the guide, but could not find it. In this way, the guide protected itself as an instance of its own wonder working. The copies they took of one each of the treatises and collections other than the guide and the staff of Moses were subsequently returned by the police. The enduring one, he is the enduring one, Said Nursi. We say this to the cabinets and tefigileri. We told our master about your invaluable service with the University of the East, and he said, If I had not been ill, I would have gone to the eastern provinces for the university. I congratulate the Minister of Education with my whole life and spirit. Fifty-five years ago, before the proclamation of the Second Constitution, I went to Istanbul to work for the founding of a university in the east called the Medresetü Zehra. There were to be three universities, one in one, one in Diyarbakır, and one in Bitlis, or at least one in one. The constitution was reinstated and the matter was neglected. Then, when the unionists were in power, I went to Kosovo in connection with Sultan Reşat's visit. The attempt was being made there to found a large Islamic university. I said to both the Unionists and Sultan Reşat that the East had far greater need, for it was like the center of the Islamic world. They gave their words concerning it, but then 
the Balkan wars broke out and Kosovo was invaded. So, I requested that the 20,000 gold liras assigned to it should be given for the university in the east. They accepted. I went to one and with a thousand lira advance laid the foundations at Artemis on the shores of Lake Wan. But then the First World War broke out and again it was abandoned. Having escaped from captivity during the war, I returned to Istanbul. Later, they summoned me to Ankara due to my services for the national movement. I went and told them there. Throughout my life, I have been trying to found a university in the East. Sultan Reshat and the Unionists assigned its 20,000 gold liras. You add the same amount to that. They agreed to allot it 150,000 liras and I insisted that the deputies should put their signatures to it. Some of the deputies protested that I intended to found a madrasa style solely Islamic institution while imitation of the West was now needed. So I told them, the Eastern provinces are a sort of center of the Islamic world. It is essential that both the modern sciences and the religious sciences are taught. For the fact that most of the prophets have appeared in the East and most of the philosophers in the West shows that the East will progress through religion. Footnote. Previously to this, I had a student who was not Turkish. In my old madrasa, thanks to the lessons in patriotism he had received from the religious sciences, that very patriotic and intelligent student used to say, a righteous Turk is more of a relative and brother to me than my own sinful father and brother. As fate would have it, that same student studied only the materialist modern sciences. Then, when I met him four years later, there was conversation about patriotic zeal. He said, I now prefer a heretic Kurd to a righteous Turkish hoja. Alas, I said, you have been corrupted. I worked at him for a week and saved him and restored him to his former patriotic self. So, I told the deputies who were opposing me in the parliament. You can see how much the Turkish nation is in need of the former attitudes of that student and how opposed to the country's benefits is his second state. That is to say, even if politics do not demand attaching importance to religion in other provinces and give precedence to this world over religion, it is essential that in the eastern provinces religious instruction is given paramount importance. The deputies who were opposing to me then complied and 163 deputies signed the bill. Surely 27 years of absolute despotism has not nullified a bill that carried so many signatures. Even if only the modern sciences are taught in other provinces, in the East, for the good of the country and nation, the religious sciences should be made the basis. Otherwise, the Muslims who are not Turks will not feel themselves to be true brothers to the Turks. We have to cooperate in solidarity now in the face of so many enemies. Now, due to my extreme incapability arising from illness, from poison and old age, I am deprived both of following this, my life's aim of 55 years and seeing it, and of going to Ankara to congratulate in heartfelt manner those who are working at the project which is the key to the East's progress. Certainly, my works entitled Munazarat and El Saikal El Islamiyya, which were printed 35 years ago by the Abu Ziya Press, have not escaped the notice of the education minister. They should speak in my place. I have just about given up hope for life. but. I appoint as deputies the 150 treatises of the risale nur which may form the foundations, principles, and sort of curricula for the university's consequential education. I present this to this country and nation's self-sacrificing young university students and education ministry and beseech from divine mercy that Tefi Gileri, who has been granted success in this question, 
will take on himself the Risale Nur in place of this wretched Sayyid. The enduring one, he is the enduring one, Sayyid Nursi, who is very ill, very old, and alone in isolation. The reply to a falsifying journalist concerning the University of the East. In reply to an article about Atatürk University, which appeared in the newspaper Ulus on 1 April 1954, written by a fiercely critical member of the opposition party, we are here explaining the truth about the university. It is as follows. Our master, Said Nursi, spared on efforts over the last 50 years to found the university which is now called Atatürk University. Although he was opposed to them, the Unionist and Sultan Rashad assigned 19,000 gold liras for its construction and its foundations were laid in one. Then, with the outbreak of the Great War, it was abundant. At the beginning of the Republican period, our master again made attempts presenting the matter to the deputies in the National Assembly in Ankara. Then, although he was completely opposed to the leadership and had renounced politics and was in some ways opposed to them, saying that he had given up the world, and although he told Mustafa Kemal that those who failed to perform the obligatory prayers are traitors, and he refused his offer of important posts such as general preacher in the eastern provinces with its salary and perks, the decision was still taken for the founding of the university in the east and it was allotted 150,000 liras and the bill was signed by 163 deputies out of 200 and ratified by Mustafa Kemal. That is to say, at that time, the university was the most pressing question concerning the East. And now, the need is 20 times greater. Finally, the decision has been taken by the present Islamic government for its construction, again as a result of our master's initiative and encouragement. We are presenting one or two points, only a drop from the ocean, describing the universal importance of the Eastern University. The first, the university is like a heart at the center of Iran, Arabia, Egypt, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Anatolia. It is both an al Azhar University and a Medretesu Zehra. The second, all humanity is now seeking ways to secure universal peace, that is, to prevent the corruption of humanity. Pacts and agreements are being signed. The Islamic government here is trying to establish friendly relations with countries from Yugoslavia to Spain for general peace and reconciliation and its own benefit. The sole solution for this is the Risale Nur, a book of instruction of the person who first proposed the projected Eastern University, which reconciles the positive sciences with the sciences of belief and is approved and praised by the official religious scholars despite its offending them and challenging the former government and has been acquitted by the courts. Evidence for this is the general peace and security it has ensured for this country and nation due to which the internal disturbances that have occurred in the Islamic countries, especially Morocco, Egypt, Syria and Iran have not happened here. Thus, the fact that the Risale Nur ensures public security despite there being more reasons for disturbances here, shows that the founding of the Eastern University will be a step towards bringing peace and reconciliation to humanity. For since at the present time the damage is moral and spiritual, a moral and spiritual atom bomb is needed to repair it. Decisive evidence for this is the fact that the Risale Nur, the source and seed of the University, has formed a barrier these last 30 years against the assaults of misguidance, scientific philosophy, and irreligion. It has acted as a moral and spiritual atom bomb repairing the moral and spiritual destruction. The third, as a center that will attract the world of Islam and all Asia, the Eastern University is of paramount importance and if expenditure on its contraction was 60,000 million liras rather than 60 million, 
it would still be worth it. Since the Yenulus is a paper of the opposition, it wants to conceal this matter and smear with accusations of reactionism some of the leading officials of the new governments who are working at it. The question, however, is one of progress, developments, and general peace. Similarly to such marks of Islam as the Arabic call to prayer and religious instruction, an educational institution of that kind will strengthen this Islamic government considerably. Indeed, because of it, the government will be applauded in the future and praised in the history books. This great service and the enlightenment that will result from the project's realization will afford an unprecedented brilliance to the democrat governments that will shine for all eternity and will gain for it international recognition. The nurse students who are attending on our master while he is ill.